Welcome back to Rock and Raz, episode one of this brand new podcast we've got uh, working here at the Port Adelaide Football Club. Remember, if you want us to come up with a brand new name, which we think we agree we do need a new name for this podcast, don't forget to leave your comments in the section on Twitter or Facebook. But uh, Rocky, a very, very special guest. A very special guest. We're always going to delve into a past player and see where they are now, what they're up to. And this man is Mr. Adelaide at the moment. Channel 7, Triple M, Port Adelaide. He's got his finger in more pies oh, oh. than anyone I know, Raz. Cabbage. Lots Money of cabbage. everywhere. <laughs> That's what I'm Sean hearing. Sean Burgoyne. Thanks, guys. Well, I've got to feed my four kids. Four uh, kids. I'm but... not sure you need to work at every possible outlet in Adelaide. But it's very important to have you on this week because Port Adelaide take on Hawthorne. Saturday night at Adelaide Oval, we hope to pack out the stadium. Hopefully we can uh, pack that out on Saturday night. How does it feel to be back home, back at Port Adelaide? Yeah, it's good. You know, the Burgoyne Cup Saturday night, apparently. That's, Cup. What they, that's what they're saying around the traps, aren't they, Raz? Um, so I've first, thing he, first thing he said to me this morning. That's I, the first thing he said to I, me. So I've been here all day and not one person <laughs> said that. You've just come out with that. He's my, I've been running it He's hard. been running it. My, yeah. He's a little, in my ear, a little, you know, a little parrot all it, day. But that's no, good to be back. It is the Sean Burgoyne Cup, but it is also a special game for the Port Adelaide Football Club. It's a Russell Ebert tribute game. Yep. Can you give us an insight into Russell when you were around? We obviously got him at the back end. Um, I got him at the back end of my career, and he was just an outstanding clubman. He did everything for anyone. Give us an insight into some Russell stories. Yeah, I met Russell when I was a very young kid, to be honest. Um, I used to come over, and my brother played with Port, so I met him through through my brother and, and the Port Adelaide connection. And then through that state under-18s, he was my under-18s coach. And we uh, went up to, to Brisbane, and we played up there. So I got, got to be coached by him, which was... Um, you know, a big honour because I was a Magpies fan. Um, and then I got drafted to Port and he was uh, working the community youth program and he was a part-time development coach. So every Wednesday we'd come out for two hours of development and Russ would take us for kicking him and Jeff Morris, kicking, marking, whatever we needed to do. He had the socks up, the black boots on, um, you know, trademark Russell Ebert. And then we'd go into community youth and I'd jump in a car, drive anywhere, you know, within a two hour radius and spend time at a school and drive back with him. And I'd hear all the stories about magpies and um, what he'd done over his career and who he played against, toughest opponents, all those stories. And even the, the, his favourite thing was bakeries, rating which bakery was, was better. So, um, yeah, I've, I've got some very special memories with Russell. Um, a great man and everything you hear about him is all true because, you know, he's an absolute legend. Yeah, you touched on it there, Shawnee, but I was just going to ask, what did he really mean to you? Like, obviously, you, you spent a lot of time with him, and then can you talk us, what was his favourite sort of bakery and pie? What did he What did he love the most? <laughs> no, he was, yeah, he was very special to me, and the, the other guys around as well who were coming through developing, you know, Dom and Kane and some of the other younger boys, um, he spent two hours every every Wednesday or morning off every week. doesn't matter if it was, you know, raining, he'd be out there, socks up. You know, taking us, teaching us how to kick, you know, how to read the flight of the ball, all the different things we wanted to. Because some of those fundamentals in footy don't change, you know. The other things do, but those things don't. And he was able to, to help you. Yeah, but then the one-on-one times where you can just chew the fat in cars and just hear the stories yeah. was unbelievable. And uh, I'm not too sure what his actually favourite um, pie was or sausage <laughs> roll, but he'd always have a nice coffee. Yeah. Always loved a nice coffee. What what amazed me the most when I got here and he went, we went on those road trips, didn't matter where we went, someone knew him. He yep. went to a service station and they'd, they'd bring up something and he would be so approachable and tell them, oh, yeah, I remember speaking to you here, there, everywhere. And it's just amazing that everyone still was felt like they were connected to they, him so strongly. They did. Wherever you went, it's amazing you say that because it, it doesn't matter where we went. They were like, oh, I used to come down and watch you play. I had the number seven on my back, my favourite player. Um, or my dad played against you or my uncle played against you. They always had a story. And no matter where you, you know what bakery went into, they knew him. Anyway, so it's <laughs> important that you get along and, and support Russell and, and send him off the right way. He was a, a great person for the Port Adelaide Football Club. We'll move on to Sean Burgoyne now. I did joke at the top of it. What, what are you involved in, just so you can <laughs> let the people don't know? We know that there's a fair bit if you just keep it to a couple of minutes. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm working obviously at Port, so I'm trying to um, help develop the boys with their skills. I'll get out there and help um, on the oval and then in and around the club. I'm, I'm upstairs working at the moment because we've got a kind of a COVID bubble set up where you, you can't go back from footy up into admin. So I should be in admin as well, um, helping and we're learning in the corporate and government relations and a bit of community stuff, but that's been on the back burner for the time being. 
Um, the other things, yeah, I've started working with Channel 7 and, and Triple M with, with yourself. Um, so you left that out of it, didn't you? You're on Triple M yourself. So we kept that quiet. We're kept kicking goals, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> so doing a little bit of that stuff on the weekends just to stay involved in the game and um, just to see how um, how that actually unfolds. So um, a little bit. I'm very busy at the moment. And Yeah. Yeah, did you did you think you'd get back into coaching? I mean, I'm grateful you did, and the boys love having you. But was it always on the agenda? Or no, it wasn't. To be honest, I never thought I'd actually step. Once I retired, I was always never going back on the footy field again. Yeah, um, ever. To be honest, so. Um, but yeah, things change. You, you, you know, you you find out what you really enjoy. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm actually enjoying being out there. And the other thing about being out in the footy field, running around with the boys, is I don't have to join a gym. I'm getting the exercise out. There's either join in and training or go to a gym. Well, oh, I, didn't, I didn't do yeah. weights for 13 years <laughs> in my career and still haven't, Shawnee. You've come from a successful environment at Hawthorne. You're back at Port Adelaide. What have you noticed about the football club being back inside the four walls? Is there? Do you feel like there's something special going on here at the moment? What, what's your take on the footy club? Yeah, it's um, it's a um, pretty positive environment to come into. Um, everyone's got high expectations. Everyone's whether it's on the footy field or in admin. You know, like I spoke before, I think the club made a profit last year. Everyone's working together and working towards a common goal. Um, so it's all building. Um, the players, you know, once you get into the inner sanctum and you see how they work, they all work pretty hard. They all want to get better. They all want to leave the end of the day better than what they rocked up at the start of the day. So I've been pretty impressed by everyone, to be honest. And um, yeah, the round one's here. Didn't go off to the best start, but you can be really proud of the way the guys played. You know, they had a number of serious, in, in, serious injuries, guy playing, guys playing with injuries, um, and they just went down. And that was a tough trip to go beat Brisbane in Brisbane. I don't think they've lost many games in the last five or six years up there. So, yeah, it was a very proud effort, but unfortunately, they still got the loss. Yeah, it was a tough trip, wasn't it? Uh, who's impressed you the most? I know you probably can't pick a favourite in terms of player or on the track, but obviously not me. I'm never on the track. But who's <laughs> ever, <laughs> ever? But no. who's you know who's who's really you've gone and come here and gone? Well, wow, he's you know he's really. Uh, there, there's a couple boys. Um, well, generally when you meet guys, you see what they what they what they do and you um, see what their personality is like. Um, Lockie Jones has surprised me. He's a big guy, mm. um, and he's only what 19, so he's a man yeah. child. Um, but if you look at him, you think, he, he, you know, what's he, what's he capable of? He's actually really fit. Mm. Um, he's got a really big tank and he's actually really fast. And I don't think that by looking at him, so he's yeah. um, surprised me in that aspect. But everyone else is just training hard um, and they do what they have to do. Um, and I'm learning what their capabilities are. So from, a, from an outsider's point of view, then coming in, um, it's really exciting. We really appreciate you coming on episode one. Shawnee, 400 plus games, four flags, and you're still not the most famous footballer in your family. <laughs> now tell me, oh, is no. she coming home? Is she coming home next year? I don't know, to be honest. It does, doesn't get, get spoken about at all. I'm not, yeah, I'm not lying here. Um, but it doesn't get spoken at all. But yeah, she's a, she's a f- phenomenal athlete. Um, we'll see what happens, to be honest. And that's, that's, that's a yes. Uh, yeah. We can Whisper take a in her ear, maybe just try and, try and get her over. Yeah. We'll see how that plays out. I, I, <laughs> Easter, gen- I genuinely Easter don't lunch. know. Easter lunch, just drop that. Great to have you on, Sean. Magnificent football royalty. 407 games, like you said, Rocky. Unbelievable. Four premierships, of course, the famous 2004 Port Adelaide Premiership. You are a star. Thank you for uh, for joining us.